Hello everybody, how you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing alright. We are still continuing on with our series and our lessons. So the last lesson we looked at was uh, 6.1 and so today we want to take a look at lesson uh, 6.2 which is entitled Rational Exponents. So today let's take a look at Rational Exponents. Hope everyone is doing well keeping social distance, keeping your hands washed, staying inside, and just taking care of yourself. That's all we're going to do right now. Take care of yourself, take care of your neighbor, look after one another, and just be safe. Okay? All right, let's get to work. Come on. Rational exponents. And so in general, what a rational exponent is, is an expression with exponents that are positive or negative rational numbers. So in essence, we have exponents that are pretty much fractions. I mean, think about a rational number, in essence, we're saying it's a fraction, right? So exponents that are fractions, that's what we're dealing with. Exponents that are fractions, okay? All right, and or the second thing we have to understand is that all simplified expressions, and this should be simplified, not simplified, let me correct that right now. All simplified. Let's make that an I E D. There we go. All simplified expressions must contain positive rational exponents where applicable. Okay? Because sometimes your answer might not be uh, the form of a rational number a will be greater than you know one sometimes it's going to be one in other words your rational expression could be two-thirds and you write two-thirds right but if the exponent is like x squared or x cubed well you just write this two or the three if it's x squared just write x to the power of two in essence two is a rational number because it's really 2 over 1, but don't write 2 over 1, just write 2. That's why I have this where applicable clause right here, okay? And so those are the two things that you have to remember, you know? A rational exponent, we're pretty much talking about fractions as exponents, 1. And number 2, when you give me the final answer after you simplify, it must be positive. It can't be a negative rational exponent. A negative answer must be positive. Okay? Alright. So we have some examples up here. Let's get through our examples and that's going to do it. Alright? Okay. So for all the examples, you must simplify each expression. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine examples that we're going to do. And we want to simplify all of them. Okay? Alright. Here we go. Number one, so we have 8x to the negative one-half times negative 3x to the one-third times x to the two-thirds. Now notice how I have the coefficients in blue and I have the exponents in red. Coefficients in blue and the exponents in red. And by the way, there's another coefficient here that I don't have in blue. If I'm going to write it right now, you know there's a 1 right here. Okay? The reason I have these color coded is just to remind you that the coefficients, which are in blue, those are the numbers that you multiply. So you multiply the blue numbers, the coefficients. The numbers in red are the exponential powers of what we call the what? Rational exponents. The rational exponents, you add. You add those together because we have the same base of x for each expression, each term. has the base of x. So you add the exponents and multiply the coefficients. Add the blue. No, I'm sorry. Multiply the blue and add the red. Here we go. Look. So our answer is going to be 8 times negative 3 times 1 
x and x is going to be to the power of negative one half plus one third plus two thirds. And that's how you set it up. Notice that. Multiply the blue, add the red. All right, let's see what we get here. Neg eight times negative three times one is negative 24. Check. Going down the X. Check. And now we have to add up this expression right here. Okay? I mean, listen, if you have a graphing calculator or a scientific calculator, I would put that in the calculator and let the calculator add it up for us and be done with it. If you do not have a calculator, then it's no problem. We can find the least common denominator here and do this thing. So we have one half plus one third plus two thirds. And so we can multiply the first expression, three, top and bottom, multiply by one. We can multiply the second expression by two, top and bottom. And the last expression also by two, top and bottom. Because my least common denominator is six. So that's going to give me negative three over six plus two over six plus four over six, which is negative three plus two plus four all over six, which equals, well, let's see, negative two plus, or negative three plus two is negative one, and negative one plus four is three. Three over six. And three over six equals a half. And three over six is one half. Okay. So that's what it's going to give us. One half. Any questions about that? So take one half, put it right here. That's going to do it. And there you go. That's it. Any questions? Or, look, you could have did this also. Watch this. You could have taken this portion first. See that? One third plus two thirds, that's going to give me three over three, which equals what? One. And I'm going to have negative a half plus one, that also equals one half. So either way, you're fine. Example number two. All right. We know that this one half here. Power one half, this means square root. That's what power one half is. So we're going to have the square root of negative 25, and we said that this is no solution. This is the example that we had given back in lesson 6.1, I believe. This one is no solution. Okay, or well, I think we said this, we said no real number solution. Okay, all right, number three. Well, in this case, you just multiply the um, powers here, the exponents. So we're going to take negative one-third 
times 2 thirds, which is going to give me x to the negative 2 thirds times, I'm sorry, next to the 2 thirds times negative 1 third, which is going to be x to the, now multiply going straight across, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 over 3 times 3 is 9. So that's going to be x to the negative 2 ninths. x to the negative 2 ninths. But what do we say here? Our answer must be positive. We can't have any negative exponents. Okay? So this now is going to equal 1 over x to the 2 ninths. And there is our answer. One over x to the two ninths. Okay. Or you could have, you could have written it like this. Look, we said that x to the negative two ninths it also equals, and we also mentioned this in lesson six point one, right? When our exponential power is negative, just take the argument, take x, and this x is really over 1, and just take the reciprocal of it. So this now becomes 1 over x, and this becomes positive 2 ninths, which is the same thing as this. It's no different. So this is also your answer. 1 over x to the positive 2 ninths because this equals 1 to the 2 ninths over x to the 2 ninths and 1 to any power 1 to the power of any power be it uh, you know 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2 ninths doesn't matter is always 1 so this 2 equals 1 over x to the 2 ninths. So you can write it like this, your answer like this, or you can write your answer like this. Both of them are the exact same. Okay? Alright, number 4. Does anyone recall what this 1 half right here represents? What does the one half represent right there? You remember what I said? Here it is right here. One half represents what? All right, there we go. Square root. One half is square root. So we have the square root of 81 over 16, which equals the square root of 81, divided by the square root of 16, which equals Many of these rules we talked about in lesson 6.1. So kind of go back and refresh yourself on 6.1. Uh, that's going to give me 9 over 4. And I'm finished with that. There's the answer to this one. 9 fourths. That one's done. Okay, what about this fellow right here? What about that one? Well, the first thing I'm going to do, watch this, ladies and gentlemen. I notice that my power right here is negative. You see that? I have a negative power. My power is negative. So I'm going to take the argument and flip it. So now I'm going to write it like this. 8 over 125. Negative still here. To the power of 2 thirds. The negative of the power is now gone. Okay? Why? Because I applied this rule right here. The same rule here. I applied that rule there. Okay? It's gone. I took this and I wrote it like that. I took x to the negative 2 ninths and I wrote it as 1 divided by x to the power of positive 2 ninths. Same concept that I did right there. Okay. 
Now that that's done, this right here, this represents the cube root of this quantity squared. So I want the cube root of the quantity negative 8 over 125. And then I want to take all of this and I want to square it. Again, less than 6.1, we talked about that. Okay? It does not matter if the negatives with 8 or 125. It doesn't matter. Why? Because the power here is odd, and both of these numbers are perfect cubes. Keep on pressing. Okay? So here's what I would do next. I would split this up. I would look at it as the cube root of negative 8 over the cube root of 125 and then I would square it which equals okay so now do what's inside the parentheses first don't square nothing yet do what's on the inside what is the cube root of negative 8 what is that what's the cube root of negative 8 well the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2 over, what's the cube root of 125? 5. And what am I to do with this? Square it. And now I'm ready for my final answer, the final step here. Negative 2 squared is 4 over 5 squared is 25. And that's going to do it. And that's the answer. Four twenty-fifths. That's a wrap. Okay. Um. What's next on tap? Again, back in six point one. We have the cube root of the fourth root of x. All right, so what we have to do first is go ahead and multiply the index here. And if I multiply the index, that's going to give me the 12th root of x. Please just know that x is to the power of 1. And I can rewrite this as x to the power of 1 divided by 12, and that's the answer. There we go. That's it. So this is how these rational exponents, these fractional exponential powers are working. That's how we deal with these fractional exponential powers. Okay. All right, how about this one right here? What do we do with that? Well, the first thing you have to recall and know is that there is a power on x, and the power on x is the number 1. That is the power of x, 1. If you forget that, it goes down here. You're going to miss the problem. Even though it was not written, it was not there, but you have to know by default, there's a 1 there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 right here so I won't miss it. All right? And so now I have to take what's outside, this negative 1 half. When I circle it in green, negative 1 half, and multiply it times everything inside. So take negative 1 half times, I'm going to draw a straight line here, negative one half times one. Start with that. Negative one half times one is negative a half. So my answer is going to be x to the negative one half. Okay. Now I'll take negative one half times one half. Alright, and that's going to give me y 
see, one half times negative one half is negative one fourth. All right. So now I have y to the negative one fourth. All right. Times. Now I'll take negative one half. Negative one half times negative a half. What is negative a half times negative a half? Good. Positive one fourth. Okay, we're almost done. We cannot have negative exponents. Okay? So we have to go back and apply this rule right here. If it's negative, right, you take the expression and put it down in the denominator. Okay? So we have to go back. Here's how to write our final answer. I'm going to draw a line, a division line. Notice that z is positive. You see this right here? One fourth is positive. So this whole expression right here is positive. z to the positive one fourth, that stays on top. Because it's not negative. I don't have to move that one. That one's fine. But these other two, with these negative rational exponents, like x to the negative one half and y to the negative one fourth, they must go down to the bottom, to our denominator, to make those guys positive. Let's drop it down. So x to the one half times y to the one fourth, and there you go. There's the answer. That's it. All right. How about example number eight? Well, when you see this, this is just repeated multiplication. One third times two, negative two thirds times three fourths. Just multiply each exponential power. Product of power rule here. Product power rule. It's the product of powers. So we're going to have x, all right, to the one third times negative two thirds times three fourths, which is going to be x to what power? Well, pretty simply, I can cancel out. See, I have a three on the bottom. 3 on top, that goes to 1. Alright, I have a negative 2 on top, and I have a 4 on the bottom, that goes to 2. And now I multiply it going straight across. Well, there's a 1 down here, a 1 up there, and a 1 right there. It's a negative 1. Multiply going straight across, I get 1 times negative 1 times positive 1 which is to the power of negative 1 over 3 times 1 times 2 is 6, which equals, because we can't leave our answer negative. So take the expression and put it down low. So if I draw my division line, I keep a 1 on top, and this whole thing, has to go to my denominator to make it positive. So it's going to be over x to the 1 sixth. And there's your answer. That's the answer right there. Mm -hmm. That's the answer. Last problem. We have 64 x squared y squared divided by x to the negative 2, y cubed, and that whole quantity is to the power of negative one third. There are so many ways to approach this problem. There are many ways to do it. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to work on the inside and like simplify the variables first by way of subtraction, right? So here we go. I'm going to have 64, put that there. Now look at this. x squared over x to the negative 2. Okay, so let me see here now. X squared 
over x to the negative 2 is the same as x squared minus negative 2, which equals x to the 2 plus 2, which equals x to the 4th. So that's what I'm going to have right here. x to the 4th. All right, that takes care of that. Let me erase that. So now let me work on y. All right, now for y, I have y squared over y cubed, which equals y to the 2 minus 3, which equals which equals y to the negative 1, which equals 1 over y. So I'm not going to have a y in the numerator. I'm going to have a y in the denominator, in the bottom. All right. So I'm going to put a y down here below. y below, and all this to the power of negative one third. I guess another way you could look at it is like this. Watch this. We have y squared over y cubed, right? y squared divided by y cubed. Look at it like this. There are two y's here. This equals y times y. Bottom, there's three of them. y times y times y. Two y's on top, three y's on the bottom. Watch this. If I cancel them out, this y cancels that y. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. This y cancels that y. Please notice I have a y left over. And where is it? In the numerator or denominator? Exactly, in the denominator. And that's why this was here, in the denominator. All right? All right. Good, 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 good. All right, we're getting there. So that's done. All right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and grab this exponent right here because it's negative. You see that? It's negative one third. It's negative one third. So I'm going to take my argument inside the parentheses, take the argument, and I'm going to reciprocate it. I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to write it as y now over 64 x to the fourth to the power of positive one third. So I have to find the reciprocal of it. Okay? Now I'm going to use that one third because I have a power here of one power of 64 of 1, and the x has the 4. So now I'll take this 1 third, take 1 third, and first multiply it times 1. 1 times 1 third is 1 third. So I'm going to have y to the 1 third over. Now I'll take one third times one right here. That red one. That's going to give me 64 to the one third. And now I'll take one third times four. See, I'm taking the exponential power, that rational exponent, times every power inside the parentheses here. Okay, and so 4 to the 1 third is going to give me x to the 4 thirds. Last step equals y to the 1 third over, we're going to have x to the 4 thirds. x to the 4 thirds. So the question now becomes is, what is 64 to the one-third? What is that? 
What's 64 to the one-third? That's the question. Well, let's see here. 64 to the one-third equals the cube root of 64 to the power of 1. And what is the cube root of 64? This equals 4. So 64 to the one-third is 4. So 4 goes right here. And that's a wrap. There's your answer. That's it. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for section of lesson 6.2. All right. Let me share this with you because I know from my class, I taught you guys how to use the calculator, the graphing calculator very well. And so you know if there are no variables involved, you can just find the, um, the answer for these questions readily, easily, if you just use the graphing calculator. Um, so you could have used your graphing calculator with um, the first one right here. This one you can use a calculator. And you will get um, non-real solutions on here as an answer. It will say something like an a error. Makes sense because there's no solution to that problem. So you can use a calculator for this one. You can multiply these numbers on a calculator and get negative two ninths. If you multiply the, these two uh, rational exponents on the calculator, you will get a decimal. And don't forget with decimal, you got to go math. You got to go, um, what is it? Math, enter, enter. You got to find what the fraction is. Let me see. Let me look at a calculator, I'll tell you. Let me go to my, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So once you get an answer, so once you multiply these two things in the calculator, it'll give you a decimal answer. Once you get the decimal answer, you have to go to math. M A T H. Hit the math button. M A T H. And then hit enter. Enter. Enter two times. Now you do this if you have a TI. This is for like a TI. 83 plus or 84. 84 plus, same thing. So you can do that one on the calculator. You can multiply this the calculator. This one can be done, all of it on the calculator. Let me see. This one can be done on the calculator. Multiply this in the calculator. Okay, there you go. And likewise, these as well. Well, they can't combine those. No, not that one, just that one. So, uh, many of these problems lend themselves to calculator usage. Okay, so use the calculator. It's okay, that's why you have it. That's why it's on the syllabus. That's why it's a required tool to use. So, since it's required and it's on the syllabus, you might as well go ahead and use it. All right. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. You can do what we did here. But if you want to use it to check yourself, to make sure your arithmetic is correct, you use it and get it right. And oh, by the way, you can do the first one on the calculator too. You could have added all of these terms together right here. Put it in your calculator and boom. Put it in your calculator and then nobody to do what? Math, enter, enter. Put a decimal answer. Okay? Alright. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming. Thanks for paying me some attention. If you have any comments, issues, scares, concerns, worries, woes, didn't get it, couldn't get it, do overs, redos, try again, whatever. <laughs> I leave out anything. <laughs> Call, email, uh, text me, get in contact with me, and I'll be sure to help you out.
All right. Till we meet again, stay safe, social distance, and um, keep them hands washed. All right.